Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Monday. We are at the beach, and this is my laptop web camera, which I've never talked to y'all on. Y'all let me know if you like it. It sure is easy. I don't have to set up any cameras or anything. So I'm waiting on a few of y'all to come in this morning. I'm, I've got my coffee. And um, we're going to talk about a new study we're going to do. I know it's early. I guess a lot of y'all are still in the bed. Are y'all going to come in? Maybe I should go to Colored Valley Cooks this morning. Anyway, um, it is Monday morning, and it's time for our Bible study. We are going to start a, in a new book. Um, it's called 30 Days to Understanding the Bible, and I think y'all will like it. Uh, hey, Kayler. I mean, hey, Kay. I said Kayler. I, I combined your first name and your last name, Kay. Anyway, this is, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I want to do this week. Uh, I want to start a new study, and I have been, I have started several studies and not finished them, and one reason is because I'm just, I guess I'm not that well, as much as I think the structure, but now this book is amazing. I've read it before, and it's called 30 Days to Understanding the Bible, and I think that y'all will like it a lot. I found it this morning. Um, the first time I bought it, I actually bought it at a Dollar General store, y'all. And I uh, just loved it because I've always had a hard time understanding how the Bible's put together, understanding the geography and the people. And, you know, when they say they traveled to Bethlehem or they traveled to Egypt or they were going to Rome, I had a hard time understanding where those places were because I am not a history person. A lot of women are not history people. They are, um, you know, I don't know. We just aren't that interested in history. And I know some of y'all are, but this book helps you get a better perspective on, uh, it's not as much of a spiritual uh, journey as it is a uh, understanding journey, if that makes sense. So. You're not going to learn a whole lot about wisdom as far as the, the knowledge with wisdom, which Proverbs speaks of, as you will just the everyday understanding of how the Bible's put together. We've got Linda Kay, Lori Rhonda, and hello, good morning, you girls. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to look at this, it is called 30 Days of Understanding the Bible. And you can get it on the christianbooks.com. Uh, I believe it's called christianbooks.com. Right now, they've also got their Bibles on a really, really good sale. I mean, some of their Bibles are like 70% off. And, you know, they put names on Bibles. So they have some Bibles that people have put their names on wrong. And so they got them really cheap, really nice study Bibles and different Bibles. So, um I'm a Bible mutt. I love them. My brother, actually, me and Chris always follow the King James Version. And I like the Amplified Version, too. But now my brother told me about the ESV, which is the English Standard Version. And they have a new Bible out. And it's not as uh, cheap as the KJVs. But um, I'm thinking about getting me one of those because uh, from what I've heard, it's pretty good. I'm going to let Chris study it first. So if y'all want to hold off on that one, I'll let Chris look at it before we decide if it's a um, version we need to be reading. Anyway, um, this book was written by, I'm going to change my screen, and I think y'all still be able to see me. I'm on my webcam this morning because we're at the beach, and I didn't bring anything with me. Um, so I'm hoping, I know y'all probably feel like you're in my face. I told Chris, I said, you know, a lot of people do these videos, and... Um, um, and it's called On the Couch with whoever. And I said, what could I call this? They're so close to me. He goes, In My Face with Tammy. What do y'all think about that? 
I'm having my coffee and it's so good. When we came down, I bought, uh, they already got out pumpkin spice um, coffee creamer. Here it is, August, and we have our pumpkin spice already by Coffee Mate. I love this stuff. So I got some at Walmart. Um, I'm going to change my screen. I think y'all will still be able to see me when I do this. Chris, can you go on and make sure they can see me? At least so that they can read my comments. Uh, and I'm going to tell y'all about this book, okay? Because I've already got it for my Kindle. Now let me just say this about this book before you decide to get it on your Kindle. Um, it's only $9.99 on the Kindle, but you can go in and buy this book in other places for just a few bucks. And I'm talking about $5.99 and things like that. I think it's at the Christian bookstore right now for like $5.99. And y'all really need to do that because the way this book works is it has little um, places that you can write in things. And it has maps so that you can study the maps and learn where to place the names of the places. And that's part of the way he teaches you, and it's really, really cool. Now, with that said, if you can try to get a hard copy, go if you if you have the money, go ahead and buy the uh, Kindle copy so you'll have it on your phone or your computer. But get a hard copy so that later on um, you can pick that book up and and work with those maps. Okay. Um, I was going to tell you uh, about what this says in the introduction, just so you'll kind of know what the book is. It says, let's make a bargain. It says, if you'll give me 15 minutes a day for 30 days. Now, of course, I'm not going to do this every single day for 15 minutes, but I am thinking about, since it's just 15 minutes a day, I am thinking about coming on here more than just Monday and Friday uh, because it's 15 minutes and we could spend 15 minutes together Monday through Friday. I'm going to need y'all anyway, especially if this cancer comes back, uh, to root me on and to keep my spirits up. And good. And the Lord, y'all know that the Lord can do that better than anybody. So it would be nice to kind of uh, have that. It says, let's make a bargain. If you'll give me 15 minutes a day for 30 days, I'll give you an understanding of the Bible, the most widely distributed publication in history. Approximately 4 billion copies. In one month, you will learn the story of the entire Bible, all the major men and women, all the major events, all the major points to the geography. You will be able to put these people and facts together in their proper chronological order and trace the geographical movement as you think your way through the entire Bible. Yet the Bible is more than history. It is a treasure house of important teachings that have been the foundation of Western civilization from the Roman Empire until today, including important and profound ideas which have been embraced by Christians for the last 2,000 years. It says you will learn about these 10 great subjects, Bible, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, man, sin, salvation, angels, and future things. No attempt has been made to interpret the Bible in this book. The information is presented at a face value as it is found in the scripture. No previous knowledge is assumed. A beginner will not be overwhelmed and the established student will find much help in organizing and expanding what he or she already knows. The Bible is an enormous book covering much information in many subjects. It is not possible, of course, to learn it in 30 days, but you can gain a beginning knowledge and overview that you can use to build a more complete understanding in the years ahead. In just 15 minutes a day for 30 days, you can gain a foundational grasp of the most important book ever written. Um, am I still on Chris? I'm trying to figure out how to come back to the, oh, here I am. <laughs> now this is new to me. I don't know how to do it. Um, so 
it's a really cool book. I'm not going to start it today because I'm just telling you all about it, okay? Um, I did. I found this book at Dollar General. I fell in love with it. I went through it. I did the 30 days. It was amazing how much I learned in 30 days, how I could, how I knew where these areas were, these men were traveling to in the Bible. Do I still know it? Absolutely not. I'm just like everybody else when you take a history class. You learn something, and if you don't keep applying it, what do you do? You lose it. So let me say this. Um, I would love to learn it all over again with you guys and uh, try to remember it, okay? And it's been a, a while, hasn't it, Chris, since we did that Bible study? We liked it so much that we actually did it with, Chris used to be a, a Sunday school teacher, and we did it with our class. Now, at the time, that book cost almost $20, but in the books, I mean, in the Dollar General, it was really cheap, like $6. Now, Dollar General don't have the book anymore, y'all. This was probably 10 years ago, so y'all are going to have to get it online. I've noticed that if you just Google the name of it, and it is in the post before this one, if you just Google the name of that book, you can find it in Goodwill stores. You can find it at um, eBay, you can find it on Amazon, or if you want to be a nice little Christian, you can buy it at the Christian bookstore and support them and buy one of the Bibles they have on sale, which, which are amazing prices. Um, if you have not been able to afford in the past a Bible that has a true leather cover, uh, you might want to go on there, pick your favorite version and pick leather cover and go to from low to high and just see what they have marked down. And I mean, to me, it's worth buying a Bible that the name has been written wrong on the bottom and they just got to, they just cover it up. To me, I mean, who cares? You know, as long as you make it yours on the inside. Uh, I will say this, if you're going to buy a new Bible, I really like study Bibles. And the reason being is because at the bottom of each sheet, they describe things to you, and um, they usually talk about a chapter and what it's about, put you in the context that you're reading, that kind of thing, and it's helpful, okay? So y'all go in there and play around today on uh, christianbookstore.com and have fun, and I hope somebody gets a new Bible. I really want one of the ESVs if Chris will study it for me and find out. Can you do that for me today, Chris, please? Um, he just got up. I've already had one cup of coffee. This is my second cup of coffee. So I got green nails this week. What do y'all think about that? And I got to tell y'all about these things. Do you see that stripe on those nails? Wait a minute. See the stripe? They have got this new thing down here in Florida. I don't know if it, they got it at home or not, or if y'all have it. Wait a minute. Let me take a step. I do not want to waste my cup of coffee. But what it is, is it's a nail color that changes colors with the mood. Well, it really don't. You know, that's just how they try to pull you in. But the cool thing is, this lady had, was getting them when I was there. And hers were blue. More of a blue-green. Mine is a true green because green is Chris's favorite color. And I decided I would get green for him. I hardly ever wear green, so it's probably not going to match anything I wear, but I don't care. Um, Y'all can see it. Somebody said they like my mermaid nails when I did the video of the steak yesterday. But let me tell you what he does. He paints them. I wanted to video it, but I didn't know if he'd want me to. He paints them, and then he takes a magnet, and he holds it over the top of it at an angle, and it pulls the color out of the nail and makes it striped. I think it's so cool looking. It is so hard for me to figure out how to show y'all stuff on this new camera. This is not a new camera. I just never use it. The color's not all that great, but I'm sure y'all feel real close to me. Um, let's see if anybody's said anything this morning. Tammy Blankenship says they look like a pretty fruit. <laughs> yeah, they kind of do. Um, hey, Lisa. And Stacy and Deborah, Deborah, I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're feeling better. Lori and Tammy, who else is on here? Cynthia, oh my good sweet girl. Joe, Bonnie, 
Linda, Rhonda, we got a lot of people on here this morning. Um, of course, I hadn't heard a word from the doctor. It's Monday morning, uh, but I'm sure hoping to. And I may even call them by the end of the day today. I'll wait until the evening, probably around four. And I'm just going to call and go, hey, y'all have my results in. And just see what they say. Because I want to know, you know, the, lo the closer it gets to getting those results, the more nervous you get. And uh, I mean, it doesn't do me any good to be nervous, but you know, I'm human, so I'm a little nervous. I told Chris, I'm not nervous because I have to fight it so much as it, I don't want to be sick all over again. And all my good uh, uh, cancer sisters know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's just not fun. It's not fun to be sick. It's not fun for the family because you pull them down too and they have to wait on you and take care of you. And it's just not a fun thing, but we'll get through it if we need to. Um, but y'all, I've looked in the statistics on my type of cancer, which is triple negative, are so not uh, on for a reoccurrence. Uh, the majority of the time with triple negative, if it comes back, it comes back in the lungs, the liver, the brain, um, and it very, very, very rarely comes back as a local occurrence, especially if you've been radiated. So that is kind of a uh, good thing because according to that, uh, it shouldn't be cancer when I get my results back, but it sure did look like it on that ultrasound. I pulled out my old ultrasound just to look and it looks just like the other one did. Um, anyway, it's actually on this computer because I made him give me a copy of the MRI that day that I wouldn't have you about that doctor not doing the biopsy. So I've got a copy of it on here. If y'all ever want to see what one looks like, I could show you. Um, anyway, I want to read to y'all, because this is a Bible study, real quick, um, something I was reading yesterday once Chris left and he went fishing. Uh, we haven't caught anything, y'all, nothing but baby redfish. Um, I mean, literally baby redfish and a bunch of... Um, just fish that we normally cut up and fish with, just fish that don't matter. Um, and so Chris has been going by himself at least once a day. I only go once a day because I'm not going to sit out there and try to catch a fish for hours when I know that I'm not going to catch a fish. I have this app on my phone that tells you when the best time to catch fish is. It's always spot on. If it says it's a poor day, we never catch anything. If it says it's a good day, we might catch one fish. If it says it's an excellent day to fish, we usually catch not just one kind of fish, but all the kinds of fishes because they're all hungry and biting. And that day is actually not until the night. We were actually gonna come down here when there's four excellent days in a row to fish, according to my app. But then when we had this bopsy done, we decided to come early. So the fishing's terrible. The fishing picks up around the 11th, so we may come back. We'll see. Where are you going? Gonna make something to eat. I told him that I would cook him a biscuit this morning and make some bacon. We have not had a biscuit in a long time. And so we have bacon and I thought it out here. And so when I get off of here, y'all, we're going to cook that's the good thing about having Southern Biscuit Mix, is you don't have to make a whole batch of biscuits. You can just make two or three, and it, and it works, you know? Of course, you could do that anyway, but still. Um, I want to read to y'all out of Proverbs, because I just love Solomon, and I love Proverbs. And to me, it is the most wonderful, outstanding, brilliant poem and poems, and it just drives me nuts that in the literature classes and colleges and stuff, that they don't read out of Proverbs because it is amazing, y'all. Just totally amazing. So I'm about to read you something amazing, so please don't sign off. Please listen to these beautiful words written down by the wonderful wise Solomon, who was given the most wisdom of anybody on the face of the earth before and even now. And when I say wisdom, I'm not, I'm talking about God's wisdom. 
the wisdom of the knowledge of the word of the Lord. Okay, so when he wrote this down, it is amazing. I want y'all to hear it. Proverbs 8, okay, is where we're going to read. I'm reading out of the King James Version because it's my favorite. It says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? I want to make sure I'm in the right one. It was either eight or nine. Yes, this is it. This is my favorite. Okay. Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way, in the places of the path. She crieth at the gates and the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Now, let me say this. That those are the first three verses, and wisdom is crying out. Wisdom is God's knowledge, the knowledge of the Bible, the God's knowledge. So remember that as I read this. It's not a woman called wisdom, okay? It's, it, he references her as a woman, okay? She, it says, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. What that means, let me just say this, she's saying wisdom is uh, really God, you know, and his not, he's perfect, okay? And she's telling you that she can find out the knowledge of witty inventions, which means if you're a schemer or you have bad intentions in your mind or thoughts, she knows it, okay? Or God knows it. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the fr forward mouth do I hate? Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding and I have strength. By me kings reign and princes degree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Now this is where I remember one time my granddaddy was so down in the dumps because of politics and who was ruling you know, the world or who was ruling the America or whatever. And, and I don't even remember who this president was then or who had gotten, but I told him, I said, God, I said, granddaddy, you know that God is in control of people who get put in those powers. And I said, it says it in the Bible and here it says it plainly. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth, by God, okay? So if somebody's up there and you're not crazy about them, God put them there. So whether you like it or not, you should respect it, and you should respect the person in control. And I know there's some really bad people sometimes in control, which doesn't make sense, but only God knows why. Okay, it says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. And we're seeking him early this morning, right? Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. 
I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. So he's telling us that if we love him and we hate evil and we fear the Lord, that we will have treasures. Okay? The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Now get this, this is amazing. He's telling you that wisdom was here before God created the earth. And listen to what he says. And this is Solomon writing writing this poem. Uh, and he, and of, of course the Lord helped him because he gave him the wisdom. But listen to this. Um, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. There were when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, and when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, Rejoicing in the ha habitable heart of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways, hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All that hate me love death. That is one of the most amazing poems that I've ever read. I just love it. He tells you who wisdom is. He tells you how important it is for us to hear the wisdom, acknowledge the wisdom, fear the Lord, how he was here before the earth was made, or she, the no one named wisdom. I mean, it is just so deep. It is amazing. And if that don't give you cold chills and give you hope and give you uh a reason to be happy and smile today, then I, I don't know what to tell you besides read it over and over until it does. Because when I, when I read it, it gives me chills to know that God loves us that much and that God uh, gives us such opportunities to care for him, acknowledge him. He warns us and he blesses us just like he would if, you know, just like you would with your own children. And we're just so, so blessed. And we're just so, so um, undeserving of all the things he's done for us because none of us are perfect. And when I read that forward, for, forward mouth, you know, it makes me feel guilty because if I've ever been in trouble, Lord knows it's with my tongue. And um, when you look that up, it just says, um, and he talks about women in, a lot in Proverbs. I mean, yeah, he talks about women a lot in Proverbs. And um, it makes me feel guilty, and not because I'm the whore he talks about in Proverbs, but because of the forward mouth that I have, because I speak before I think, and I should be quieter in my spirit, and I should listen. Um, but y'all... We're supposed to feel guilty sometimes when we, read, when we read the Word of God. It's supposed to do that. It's supposed to be sharper than a two-edged sword. 
and we should not mind um, it piercing our heart uh, because when it pierces our heart, it just makes us love him more. And um, I'm thankful for his word. So y'all go get that book. Those of y'all just coming in, uh, please watch the front part of this video. We are going to start on that book tomorrow, 15 minutes. Um, if for any reason me and Chris decide to go home in the morning or whatever we've decided to do, it's just 15 minutes. I could do that in the car. Um, and we're going to be following the book. And even if I read it out of the book and y'all think it's boring, just, just please follow it. Y'all will get so much out of this Bible study. It is amazing. And it's simple. It's cheap. And it's easy to do. And um, y'all will be glad that you followed it. Let me just say that. It's not one of these little feel-good you know, uh, Bible lessons, it is all about the structure and knowledge of how the Bible's put together so that we can better understand the stories and how they were written and why and in what context we're reading it in. Okay. Um, Jeannie McMahon says, I would call it on the couch in Florida with Tammy, <laughs> except I'm in my recliner. Um, but anyway, I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Monday. Me and Chris are about to make some breakfast. Lord knows I'm starving. I've been eating so healthy. And he's so, he's so structured. Oh my gosh, that man. He walks no matter what. He does what he's supposed to no matter what. Uh, there is ice cream down here that we bought before we came the first time. It's called Moolidium Crunch. Y'all know what that is. It is bluebell. And I mean... It is amazing. It has pecans, walnuts, coconut, chocolate, uh, I think like a butterscotch taffy type thing in it. It is the most dreamy ice cream I've ever put in my mouth. It was down here when we got here. I can't help but eat a little bit of it every day. He hasn't even, he tasted one tiny little bite. He's so good. He's just so good. He needs a whooping. He's so good. But anyway, I'm not. I mean, I am doing good on my diet, but for heaven's sakes, I am going to eat a little bit of that ice cream every day, and I'm going to have a biscuit this morning because I deserve one. Um, so we're about to make a biscuit, so if y'all want to watch live on Color Valley Cooks, you can because I'm going to make a biscuit for two with some bacon, and that's all we can have. I love all of y'all, and we can't go out and get one. They cost, uh, not cost too much. They got so much butter and crap in them when they make them in these restaurants and sodium, and they lather them, and they just way too many calories. It's a lot better to do it at home. Y'all have a good day, and I'll see you in a few minutes on Color Valley Cooks. Love ya. Get that book, y'all. Get the ebook if you need to. It's just $9.99, but I wish y'all get a hard copy so you can write in it, okay? Uh, bye. Love ya. Thanks for watching, Real Southern Woman. Oh, y'all. Oh, I won't even say that. Bye.